Welcome back, my fantastic friends. It's Master Temple here, and this is the Master Paints the Masters. In these episodes, we take a past master's masterpiece, and I recreate it using my own methods and my own techniques. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at Claude Monet. So let's have a see what painting we're going to try and reproduce. And this is it, such a wonderful scene, and it's called At Cap d'Antibes, which loosely translates into At the Cape of Antibes which is in the southern tip of France. Now on this double prime pre-stretched canvas, it's been coated in liquid white. All I'm doing is tickling just above the horizon line with a touch, a tiny touch of the bright red. I just want a pinkish glow in the sky. And this will mix with the liquid white that's on the canvas to give a like a pinky glow. And we know that there's gonna be some sea down here. So we'll put a little bit of sea water down as well. Now, as we go along this painting, what we'll do, we'll, we'll touch on Monet and we'll touch on the painting itself and we'll, we'll have a look into the some historical facts of Monet's life as well as the painting. As Also, as you can see, I've, I've speeded up the painting in places just for, 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 for ease of viewing, really. But we're just adding a little bit of, this is ultramarine blue up here in the sky. Now, these are oil paints and we can blend these on the canvas because of the liquid white that's that's already on the canvas. Now I thought, well, since we're doing a French painting, we'll have French ultramarine. Now with a big dry brush, this is a, a clean dry two inch brush. And it's, it's, it's one I found really great for blending the sky together. Now I didn't coat the whole sky in, in complete blue. I left some little lighter parts in there. So when we do finish up blending the sky, you'll have some variant in the sky, a little bit of, a little bit of mysterious sparkle going off up there. And every now and again, we'll lose a little air out of the brush, but that happens from time to time. If that happens, we just flip him off and blend him away. That's all we need to do. That's all we need to do. Now, what we're gonna do now is just come in with some more white paint. This is just titanium white. And just right where there's some clouds above the mountains. So we'll put some of those in. Um, but right above that pinkish glow, we'll just add a little bit of white, not much, just enough to, so we can't tell where the blue stops and the red colour starts, the pinky colour starts. And of course, when we've got that white on the brush, we can just put in a few little floaty clouds up here. Remember, this is the Mediterranean, this is on the southern tip of France, and we want to recreate that really warm, nice, hot Mediterranean -y day. Just like that, just like so. Now Claude Monet, he, Oscar Claude Monet, to give him his full name, was born on the 14th of November, 1840, and he lived to, to the grand old age of 86 when he sadly passed away on the 5th of December, 1926. He was a French painter, and he was one of the, the, the founding fathers of uh, the Impressionist movement, the Impressionist painting movement. Now, as you can see, I'm just adding some sea down here. This is a, this is some sea, so all we're doing is adding some ultramarine and a bit of Prussian blue in places, tiny bit of phthalo blue. Just we'll mix the blues there on the on the uh, on the painting. We don't have to work ourselves away on the palette. And if we pull from the outside in, we're going to end up with a little bit of a light spot right in the middle, just like that. And again. Just blend it all together. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna add plenty more elements into this sea as we go along. There we go. So right on this horizon line, we'll just add some more white paint, some pure white, titanium white. And then we can start working that towards us, right in the middle of that sea. And that will emphasize, that will emphasize that light spot that's zinging right across the water. And then we'll just blend them out just like that. Claude, Claude Monet was one of the most uh, prolific painters of the Impressionist movement. Uh, and he expressed his perceptions of nature, especially in the, uh, the open air method, like the outdoor method, uh, plein air, I believe they call that. Now you can see I've had a bit of crimson and white to the, to the fan brush and I've just highlighted, well I've just outlined 
where the mountains will go. And again, this is not just a, a, a carbon copy. This is going to be uh, my version of it. So, so the shape of the mountains might be slightly different. The shape of this big tree in the middle will be slightly different. Now with a bit of white paint on the fan brush, we're, we're going to scrub in some clouds. So we're just going to flick in some clouds that, and we'll come right down to that mountain line. And we'll do some at this side. Again, we'll just use the corner of the fan brush, just, just flicking off some of that titanium white paint, just like that. Now, usually if you've seen me paint before, I'll put the clouds in first before painting any of the mountains, but I just want to do it this way, show you how, and, and how these are recreated. And to the bottom of that, that that big old cloud that's living just above those mountains. I'm going to add a little golden touch to the underside of these clouds just by using a bit of yellow ochre. I'm just scrubbing a little bit of a golden glow on the underside, just like that. And then we'll come back in and we'll blend them all together. Happy days. There we go. Just like that. Now the term impressionism is derived from the title of, uh, of, of Monet's painting impression, which was basically translated into Impression Sunrise. It's uh, Salil Levant. This was exhibited in 1874 in the first independent exhibitions mounted by Monet and several of his associates as an alternative to the, uh, the prestige gallery of the Salon de Paris. As you can see here, I'm just blending them away, mixing them all together. I've added a touch of black into that gold as well, just to, just to add some variant into the clouds. And then we can come in and tickle, tickle it all together with a very soft blending brush, just like so. And it doesn't matter if we hit that top line of the mountains because we're going to come back and, and reaffirm all that and put some nice nice shapes to these mountains in, in, a, in a few moments' time. Now, Monet, we, we were born, obviously, I've stated this before, on the 14th of November, 1840, uh, just outside Paris. And he was the second child of, uh, of Claude Aldolf uh, Monet and his mother, Louise Justine Monet both of them second-generation Parisians. Now what you can see I'm doing here is I'm just using crimsons and I'm going to be touching blues and I'm going to be maybe a bit of red every now and again. Touch of crimson, touch of blue. We're going to vary the colours and it'll mix with a liquid white. So we're going to get all sorts of variants happening in these far, far away mountains. Now in 1841, Monet was baptised. He was baptised uh, Oscar Claude, though his, uh, his parents affectionately just called him Oscar. And even though he was baptised um, a Catholic, he grew up and became an atheist in later life. Which is uh, quite an interesting fact. There we go, you can see I'm just, just tickling the colours about creating all sorts of depth, shadows and highlights into, into these little hills. And we hit a bit more of the blue in that one. And this fan brush really does work wonders when, you, when you're creating these far away hills. It really does work well. There we go. So we can carry on adding more shades of different colours of crimsons and blues and pinks and purples to these hills till we get the desired lightness that we wanted. Now I just want to mention to you guys out there that the, that my Etsy shop is, is now open. It's been open a, a week or so now, two weeks perhaps, and it's, it's doing quite well. I'm quite proud of it. And I, I thank everybody that's, that's visited it and, and purchased something from there. It's, it really does help me out. I do appreciate that, so thank you. It's, it's Master Temple's Arts at, at the Etsy uh, and the Etsy app which is brilliant, brilliant, thank you. Now we're just working his way down with these colours right into the sea, right into that white paint that we put on there 
again we've got titanium white paint that we, we, we added onto the uh, onto the liquid white and the closer we get to that the more this this paint down now the mountains will pick up and it'll become paler as we tap harder there we go and we don't want to we don't want to kill all that white area off we want to leave some breaks in there so that'll give the the indication of little fog patches that are, that are living between these hills now with that same dirty brush all we're doing is pulling slightly down and we're going to create some lovely reflections now if you notice on, on Monet's original painting there's no reflections that I can see I'm putting some in my my representation of this painting I think reflections are such so so look so wonderful and we're just going to match the paint above a little bit of a darker colors there in here give a variant now we'll just bring all that together with a bigger brush and then we'll gently go across all that and there we have it instant reflections right down into the sea now we're going to put some ripples on top of all this but before we do that there's a couple of little houses that are living at the other side of the cave so far away you can hardly make them out so we're just going to touch a little bit of a little bit of white paint just put the odd indication here and there of some houses not many we don't want to overkill we don't want to spoil the uh, spoil the view just put one or two houses here and there just a little bit of liquid white paint right on the old script liner brush now we'll put a little bit of a, a water line in back to the liquid white and we're just going to cut straight through like we're trying to cut a hole straight through the canvas a little water line what we'll do we'll carry on putting water lines in this painting we'll have a big tree there won't we just keep doing this. I'm going to work forward on this as well. It'll all come. It'll all make sense in a in a few moments' time. Now what? Now Monet's father wanted young Claude to become a member of the family firm to follow him into the uh, into the family business of groceries. But uh, but young Monet had other plans. He wanted to become an artist. Monet's mother was a singer and had a bit of a passion for the arts as well, so, so quite openly promoted this. But, uh, but it, as we find out later, his, uh, his father wasn't too, too impressed with, with that notion. And as you can see, all I'm doing is I'm adding some more liquid white right on top of that blue, that white and blue colours that we put down as the sea. And we'll create all sorts of ripples and effects just where the sunlight is hitting we can put these wherever we think they should be just as long as they're nice and flat we don't want them going straight upwards else we'll have a, a pretty rough sea but I'm just going to add one or two here and there and there and here just like that and then we're going to vary the colour of these as well so eventually once we get round to it we'll add some blues into this as well there and with a big delicate brush all we're going to do is just just bring all this together just to take off any sharp edges that the knife's left behind just very gently we don't want to smudge any of this paint just very gently pretend you're floating over that water that's all we're doing and you've got to paint this nice and straight as well else you'll end up pulling the, the liquid white right down and that not look nice, it'll, it'll destroy the paint and it'll disturb your eyes a little bit. And of course, we're going to touch some of these blue. So this is a, this is phthalo blue, with a little bit of thinner mixed in with that. And we're just going to go straight on top of that. And it doesn't matter if the, the thick lines or the thin lines. So again, we're going to come back in with a, a big blending brush and just just tickle them all together this will give a nice effect something I don't do often on, uh, on my 
understand your paintings, but it's, it does give a wonderful effect. Just all on the edge of the knife. So during, during Monet's childhood, he used to draw charcoal caricatures, which he would sell for 10 or 20 francs. And back then, that was a lot of money. That was a lot of money. That was crazy stuff, but well deserved. I bet they're worth more than any 20 francs nowadays. <laughs> okay, so we're just tickling those colours together. Just very gently, very lightly. There. That'll give the impression of some little sparkly, sparkly bits that are living on the water. There. See, we had a bit too much blue there, so that happens. Just put a bit more white on top of him. That easy. We can work with anything, can't we? If you get a bit too much white in that you don't like, put a bit of blue on top of it. Eventually, if you were to do this, you could build up several layers of paint and it become quite thick. Put some more in down there. When Monty was 16, um, in 1956, on the beaches of Normandy, he met a fellow artist, Eugene Boudin, who, uh, who became his mentor and taught, taught him how to use oil paints in the outdoor technique that en plein air that we, we talked about at the beginning of the, the beginning of the film. It's basically the outdoor technique. So we're taking um, an image that you see outside with all the light and the darks and the shadows and the, the highlights and we're just recreating that on canvas and that one, that's what Monet was, was exceptional at. So we're going to have this big tree here. Big tree, just right here in the middle. And then, now we've got that in the way, we can start to build the stones. There's several stones that are living out here in the sea. So we can put them in without actually disturbing the tree. Now if you've seen me paint before, and I'm sure many of you, many of you have, I would have put the stones in and then I'd have painted the tree right over the top of the stones. But for reference purposes, I want to put the big tree in first and then we'll put these stones in afterwards. And we're just down here, a little boulder sticking up through the sticking up through the sea. These are on the little round brush. Now we can see the colour slightly different from the from the hills in the background. This has got a bit more golden colour to it, a little bit more ochres. And again we'll come in with a bit of I'm touching crimson and brown here and this will create a nice little shadow effect. So we'll pick the shadow side which our mountains in the background says on the left hand side. And we'll just create the shadowy side on these, just like that. And carry on making lots of beautiful little stones. A little fan brush, pull the base of those little stones down into the sea, just like we did with the mountains in the background. That creates lots of nice little reflections. That easy, that easy. Just tickle them across very gently tickling them across and we'll come in with a knife tiny bit of liquid white right on the edge of the knife yeah. just cut in a little little bit of a splish and a splash right around the base of those stones and we can set them right into the painting and we'll use the small edge of the knife just to cut that in now this wants to be perfectly flat you don't want the the water to look like it's running uphill. Yeah, happy days, happy days. January 28th, 1857, Monet's mother died at the age of 16. He left school and he went to live with his widowed, childless auntie, Marie. And what you can see, I'm just basing in some, some foreground material on the, on the original painting, it had a nice sandy colour. So we've put a, 
some bold vibrant colours down I like bold vibrant colours as you know so this is a mixture of yellow ochre and every now and again a bit of sienna we're touching the reds we'll add a bit of brown here this is Van Dyke brown maybe a touch of crimson mixed in with that just vary the colours as we go along we can put a little bit of shrubbery down here in, the, in this corner so we're all again just sit same as the cloud we're just hitting with the corner of the, the fan brush and we're just lifting upwards so we vary the colours as we go along to give that nice to give that, that variant of colour that's going on on the canvas we'll darken this corner off as you've painted with me before we, we like to keep the corners nice and dark whether it be dark blues in the sky right in the very corners or some kind of dark foliage colour down in the, in the foreground that draws your eye right into the centre. Again, we we'll mix the colours, a bit, a bit of white there, we can touch the blues, the greens, whatever we feel like, whatever we feel like. It'll all work out for us, won't it? Yes, it will, you know it will. So Monet he travelled to Paris and visited the Louvre um, and he witnessed other painters copying from the old masters. Now that's a fantastic idea, isn't it? Having brought his paints and other tools with him, his palette knives and paintbrushes, he would in, instead he'd go and sit by a window and paint what he saw outside the window rather than, than painting the, the old masters. He would paint what he'd see. Which is, which is wonderful, it paints nature, it painted nature. And we're just going to reaffirm this, this big old tree, tree trunk. So this is Van Dyke Brown on the fan brush and we're just going to pull in a nice big tree trunk and we'll give him a big, a big root down at the bottom, keep him upright here on this sandy bank. Of course this has got a bit of a crook in the, a bit of a crook in this tree. Now, if we remember correctly, there's a big old branch that almost reaches out to the to the right hand side of the painting. So we'll put one of those in. And of course, once we've had some foliage, it'll extend it even further. There, yeah, just like that. And then we'll come back in with a the script liner brush, and we'll have this one hanging down. Now this is Van Dyke Brown mixed with some paint thinner. That'll slide right over the paint that we've put already on the canvas. And we'll create all sorts of sticks and branches and other bits and pieces. Try and get my arm out of the way so it's, it's not creating as much shadow. And just put all sorts. A lot of this will get covered up in foliage, but some of it will show through. And that's what we're after. That's what we're after. Now Monet stayed in Paris for several years and he would meet other artists and became friends and fellow impressionists uh, such as Edouard Ma Manet, not Monet, Manet. They were both good, good friends and good founders of the movement. Just add some sticks down here at the base, give a bit more depth to that. Now we could add some bark to this old tree so the variant of brown colours. We'll start by just touching, touching the bark, touching the tree with a with a paint knife, and it will pull off what it wants and it'll leave the paint on the paint knife what it doesn't need, and we can move along and, and put a bit more. We'll vary the colours again, so we'll put a darker colour, the shadow side, a bit of lighter colour on the lighter side. And when this dries, when this dries, it will feel like bark. It will be wonderful. It will actually feel like bark. Because we're painting it with an eye, you see. Just like that. Now here's a story for you. Monet was drafted into the French military and he was there for about seven years or several years. And uh, his now wealthy father could have bought him out of the army but declined to do so when Monet refused to give up painting which is which is crazy isn't it yeah. and while in the military he was based in Algeria 
Monet, Monet did a, a slack handful of sketches. He did some landscapes, some, some sketches of Casbars um, and portraits of officers, but well, unfortunately all these have been lost in the sands of time. Imagine, imagine going to Algeria and finding one of those in a, on a map. It would be crazy, wouldn't it? So again, we're just hitting this with a knife. A little bit of lighter colour there. We just want this edge to sparkle. So if we hit it with white, it'll pick up the colour that's underneath as we as we touch with the knife. Now let's put some foliage up there. So on the, the, the big old rounded brush, this is just straight sap green now. Straight sap green. We'll put some foliagey looking things up here on these branches. Like I said, most of these branches will get covered up, but, but some will remain. And uh, that's what we're after. So we'll just touch, just touch. We're not painting, we're not, we're not, we're not painting like we would paint the sky. We just, we just touch, 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 tap, tap, tap. We'll vary the colours, we'll, we'll hit a bit of brown and a bit of black every now and again into that green just to give a variant of shade to this foliage and eventually we'll come back in here and we'll, we'll hit some highlights there, right over that cloud we know that cloud's there though we learned how to make that cloud so it wasn't wasted Eventually, Monet's, uh, Monet caught typhoid while, while serving in the military and he, he caught typhoid feed and went absolutely out leave and eventually Monet's aunt intervened and had him removed from the army if he agreed to complete a course at an art school. But he was, uh, he was disheartened and disillusioned with the, the arts, the traditional arts that are taught at these schools and in 1862 he, uh, he met up with some, some friends, Basile and Renoir, and they shared new approaches to art, and painting and the effects of light and the, the en plein air uh, with broken colour, fast rapid brush strokes. This is what later became known as Impressionism. They shared that. Now this painting that we see on here, uh, the At Cap d'Antibes, uh, this, this was done on an oil on canvas in 1888. It's about 65 centimetres by 90 centimetres. So pretty big, pretty big. And I think it sits in a private collection though. Don't quote me on that. Monet, he, uh, he started in early spring in 1888. And he spent several, no uh, several months at Antibes in the south of France, creating a whole range of different, different paintings. And as you can see, I'm just hitting this big old tree here now with some highlight colours. So, taking that dark colour and we've touched it into a little bit of the cad yellow to make some, some highlights. And we'll not kill all that dark colour, but we want to emphasise more on, on the right hand side of the, these branches. So, if you've got a, a past master that you would like me to paint please let me know down in the comments i'd love to hear your views which, which, which painting you want me to try and attempt to do next it would be fantastic to hear from you 1914 monet began to develop cataracts which is not good for an artist not good for anybody but not good for an artist and on the 5th of december 1926 at the age of 86 monet died of lung cancer and at his funeral over his coffin was draped a black cloth and a friend of his ripped off the black cloth and replaced it with a bright flower pattern cloth and shouted, no black for Monet, which is quite fitting to a guy who liked to paint the bright colours of the outdoors and gave birth to the Impressionist movement. Some of Monet's paintings, they've reached over 110 0.7 million dollars which is about 98 million euros or about about 80 85 million pounds which is which is eye-watering which is absolutely eye-watering and i believe monet holds the record for the first impressionist painting to cross the 100 million dollar threshold 
right here on the edge. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just touching a tiny little bit of bright red. It's a little bit of bright red in Monet's tree, so we'll put a little bit in ours. Just a tiny bit of bright red right here. Some of the edges of these leaves. I don't know if the fruits or if they're the turning leaves, I don't know. We'll clean up the feet of this, this big old tree. So let me know how do you think we've done? Do you think, uh, do you think Monet would be proud of this one? Do you think he'd uh, give me a pat on the back for this? Let me know your thoughts and let me know what you, you, uh, you want me to paint next. Just tidy up that little bit of a bit of bark there. It's, it's annoying me that one, just a little bit of dark paint. I can drag this down into the, into the grass. Really set him into the painting. And I think we're about ready for a signature. So what we'll do, thin out the red paint with some paint thinner. And just uh, sign it down here. Just initial DCT. I do sign the back of them. But uh, let's go over and compare and contrast both the pictures. So you can see on the left is Monet's and on the right is mine. Let me know what you think guys. And until next time, do stay safe. Take care. Happy days.